This is it. We have arrived. This is the last Season 3 Overwatch League predictions. We have the Grand Finals. This is it. The champion will be decided this weekend. Matches starting tomorrow, going through Friday, as well as Saturday. As you can see, we've got the bracket right here, and man, it's it's been a journey. You know, it's been a, it's been an insane year. You know, ups and downs, a lot more downs than ups. Um, you know, for the world, for most people, um, and now you know, season three is coming to a close. So, you know, Overwatch League was a thing that really you know helped me get through this year, um, and I hope it was for some of you as well. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Going to be doing. There will be more videos after this. Um, I'm going to do, you know, once a little, once some of the dust uh, settles, I'm going to be doing videos of, you know, where each team goes uh, from here, suggested moves, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, for all 20 teams in the league. So look forward to those. But for now, we have got to get into it with the final four teams that are left. As you can see, we've got Seoul Dynasty taking on San Francisco Shock. Um, in our first match, you know, the second seed Seoul from the Asian region and the one seed from the NA region in the Shock going at it. So, um, and then all the other one, uh, we've got Philadelphia Fusion, NA2 versus Shanghai, who was number one out of the Asian or APAC region. So I'm super excited for these matches, you know, not only because, you know, best four teams, um, but also we get to see the chess match. Um, for the first time, you know, these teams finally get to face off against each other. Um, we get to see which, um, stylistically, which composition, um, is better against the other. Will the teams play mirror or will they play other stuff? Because as we saw, you know, in the entirety of the, of the playoffs leading up to this, the NA teams and the Asian teams had it, they had different metas, um, in their regions. So, you know, after practicing, are they going to run you know the compositions they were doing before um and just see which one's better are they going to mirror one comp or the other are we going to see switches in you know in the compositions are we going to see something new entirely um it's going to be an absolutely fascinating um set of of matches to watch um but first of all like i said it's shock versus dynasty shock looking for the repeat trying to become you know the back-to-back -back 2019 and 2020 champions um you know this is already regarded as the best um you know overwatch elite or overwatch team in history um even though you know there are obviously a couple of changes um from last year but they can you know they can cement themselves as the easily the greatest franchise ever if they're able to pull it off this year as well you know Seoul this this redemption story of a team that failed miserably in 2018 in 2019 they were better you know they made the playoffs they made a little bit of a run and some noise but they fell out re uh, relatively early um which was a you know a massive letdown for them um and now this year, you know, it's an up and down, you know, they finished the season with a 12 and 12 regular season record, which isn't great, you know, by any means, it's, you know, mediocre or average, however you want to describe it as, um, but they made this amazing run, you know, taking down teams like the Spark and the uh, New York Excel to not lock in their spot in the Final Four. So, Shock is definitely favored in this one. I am going to go with the Shock. Um, I think that Coaching is going to be absolutely crucial in this. Like I said, they some of these matches might, like especially the first few, might be determined just by the game plan. Um, you know, at some teams, if there is a compositional difference, like a significant one, some of these teams might not be able to come back at all. They might not be able to recover, and it's just done for them. So I think Shock is the better team. I do think their coaching is probably a little bit better. You know, we've we've praised their coaching since season two um my standout player from the shock this season has to be smurf i mean what an incredible tank he has been for them this year um you know when he had to play a bunch of risa i thought he was the best in the world um and when you know when he's been playing more winston recently it's also been just so 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 good so i think that he's probably you know i i was beating on the moth drum last year but this season i think that um, Smurf is their most underappreciated and important player. Um, and think about it. That was, they, they traded for him from the Outlaws in season two. 
and what a good trade that was because as good as as good as Super is, you know, as great as he is to the team, as clean as his Reinhardt can be, um, you know, his his Winston and his Arisa just isn't nearly on the level of Smurf. So what a move by the Shock, you know, and, and now it was, to be fair, they did get Dante back, who is a great player for them as well. But it's like, man, what if they had Dante and Smurf, you know, what it, what just what if um, that could have been their missing piece as well. Um, but like I said, I got Shock winning this one. I think Soul probably snags one map. Um, but overall the shock, I think they're going to get a nice handle, um, on this match because, you know, of the four teams, Seoul has, you know, Seoul's lost more matches than the other three combined. So definitely the most flawed team going into this, although they do still have the potential to win it all for sure. But early on, definitely like the shock there staying in the winner's side. Then it's Philadelphia Fusion taking on the Shanghai Dragons. This is a fascinating one for me. Definitely the more interesting of the um, of the first matches. Um, for you know, first of all, we talk about great coaching stabs. You know, we saw uh, Moon win Coach of the Year uh, for the Shanghai Dragons. Um, you know, Philly has been you know praised by me and many others um, for being for having an amazing coaching staff this season and being one of the main reasons why they're so successful this year. Um, so. This one, it for me, is a little bit of a pick 'em, um, but I do think Shanghai goes through. You know, I think I'm a little biased because I want to see, I want to see Asian versus NA in round one. You know, which obviously we get and in round two. So I don't want Shock and Philly to win uh, the first one, or Seoul and Shanghai to win the first one. If you know, if you know what I mean, I want them to. Um, and I and I legitimately do think this is how it will go, but I think we get to see those the two regions go against each other right away and in the next in the next series of rounds. So like I said, for me the biggest thing in this one is Shanghai's DPS I trust a little bit more. Um, you know, we've seen Philly not run Carpe too much of late. Um, you know, we'll see what they do with you know the compositions um this time around, but I just trust the dragons. Um uh, DPS duo just a bit more, you know, Lip has been so just incredible, you know, DM is a guy who might not play at all, or he might be a huge difference maker, you know, depending on what the compositions are and what happens, you know, Fleta obviously bringing home that MVP um, has been just so, so good for them all season long, um, and then both of the teams, you know, stacked, stacked tank lines, stacked, stacked, stacked support lines as well. Um, if I had to say, I would say Shanghai has an edge in DPS, and I think Shanghai has a slight edge in tank play. And then I think Philly has a slight edge in support play. So overall, a little, um, little bit more for Shanghai here. And I think they win a super, super close matchup. So that sets up in the winner's bracket, uh, San Francisco Shock against the Shanghai Dragons. So in this one, I've got the Shock. I think that they're going to throw... They're going to throw some obstacles at Shanghai. Um, you know, we have seen Shanghai fall early in, you know, in some of their matches and playoffs. Um, and I think, you know, the, the, they should have a good amount of confidence uh, after playing Philly. But then San Francisco is going to throw a couple of different looks, a couple of different play styles um, at them. And I don't think Shanghai is going to be able to quite recover in time. Still think it's going to be very close back and forth. But I've got the fusion just barely edging it out. Um and or sorry the shock just barely edging it out and staying in that winners um you know bracket putting themselves into the grand finals match um i am super hyped to see you know the the showdown between ons um and then lip slash dm you know whichever one they use more um probably lip but if we see widow resurgence you know we could definitely see a dm versus ons which would be super hype um but, you know, same thing, you know, you, you just talk about stacked lineups on both sides, um, but overall, I think the Shock have a little bit more versatility at the moment, and they've done, they've, they've had more in-game adaptations and, you know, um, player swaps, and that's going to throw off Shanghai just enough um, so that they can snag a victory there. Then, in the loser's bracket, you've got Philly Fusion taking on Seoul Dynasty, and this is one where I like Philly. I honestly think Seoul has a better chance against the Shock. Um, I think Philly is going to play super tight. Um, Seoul, stylistically, they've always been um, very diametrically opposed. 
to the the fusion. Um, and I think that Philly just plays the type of style where plays like that are punished. And, you know, if, not, if you're not using the perfect meta comp, um, they will absolutely exploit it. And if you play in a way that exposes your backline at all, they will absolutely exploit that. So I think it's a little bit back and forth. I think Soul might have a couple of moments that they could look dominant. Um, but Philly have just been better in game. You know, Seoul have lost too many. I've seen them lose too many matches 0-3. You know, and I think that if they find some things that really work, that Philly is going to be good enough at changing it up. You know, subbing new players in for the next map. Um, saying, okay, that didn't work. We have this backup, this backup, and this backup. Like I said, going back to that coaching. Um, they're going to just have enough in the end to take down Seoul and... Um, you know, get themselves one match away from the grand finals. So, if that is the case, then we have a rematch of Philadelphia Fusion and Shanghai Dragons from round one. Winner going on to play San Francisco. And I'm going to go with Shanghai again. Um, this goes against my theory. You know, my theory, said it a million times. Two teams in similar skill play each other uh, multiple times. It gets really hard for one team to win two, three, four in a row. Um, but I just feel something with this Shanghai team more so than any of the other ones. You know, we've, we've talked about, we've seen the Philly, you know, the Philly fusion just get so close in so many of the tournaments and the playoffs this year, 2018, even a little bit, 2019, they've, they've knocking on the door all season long and they haven't quite been able to finish it off. And Shanghai has been that team that finished off, you know, completing that reverse sweep against uh, the Dynasty. You know, yes, they went down in the summer showdown against Guangzhou, but then coming back, you know, and just taking the Countdown Cup in, you know, in their dominant fashion and, you know, running the table, not not losing a match in the, you know, in the playoffs leading up to this. Um, and they just, they just have that feel of a team where, you know, everyone talks about the amazing story, you know, 2018, the winless season. And now two seasons later to be to be this, you know, being solid last season, making the playoffs, um, or at least making the play-ins, and then, you know, the leap to being one of the best in the league. I just don't see their road finishing um, outside of the, the grand finals. So, well, it's, I think it's what most people have. Um, you know, it's not something super out of the box. I do think that in the end, we get shock versus dragons and you know you really couldn't think of a better way to end season three and in those grand finals by a sliver i'm going with the dragons you know i love this team i love the compositions that they run the coaching has been great you know the just the perseverance to get through so many things you know when they're down they don't tilt you know they have such a good mix of veterans you know your fletas um, you know, you could call DM uh, a veteran at this point. You know, Void has been in the league since the end of season one. Um, these guys that have been playing for so long, you know, and you and you balance that out with, you know, Lip, you know, in his rookie year being so, so good, you know. Do they run Fearless, you know? Do we see Stan 1, you know, Stan 1, another amazing rookie, and Fearless, a guy who was with, you know, the OG, well, not the OG, but in season one, he was with this Shanghai team, you know, Goguri as well, you know, it's just, it's such a great mix, um, there, I think Shanghai's back line hasn't gotten nearly the credit that they deserve, um, they've just been so flawless in their execu execution and their alt usage this season, um, so they've been the best, in my eyes, they've been the best team all season, Shock has had their dominant moments, they've also had some down moments, um, so in a amazing, close finals i think this is the closest finals by far that we're going to have you know season two shock you know shock swept out the uh the vancouver titans you know and in season one um london kind of just took over against philly and you know and, and took it home so i really think that we get our most competitive grand finals it really could go either way but having watched all the games i have when when I when I think about my gut, when I think about my brain, a little bit of the heart too, you know, because I really do enjoy the Shanghai team, even though obviously none of my main teams are in this. Um, you know, I I just 
always come back to Shanghai. You know, I was planning this out. I was writing out some some scenarios, you know, earlier, and I just kept coming back to the Shanghai team. I do not think they'll let me or any of their fans down. I don't think anyone is going to be let down with the level of Overwatch played this weekend. I'm so, so excited for it. I hope you guys are too. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Which which team you got running the table? You know, any any Dark Horse Soul fans out there? You know, they think they can make the run again? You think Shock are going to get the repeat? Or will Philly finally get over that hump? Um, I'm curious to see what you guys think and what your rationales are for that. Um, but other than that, I would just like to say thank you guys very much. It's been a very, very, very fun season of Overwatch League. You know, even with the crazy year of 2020, you know, this has been this has been a good season. And um, yeah, I think we're going to get a great end to it. Um, look forward to more videos coming out, like I said, um, as more transactions happen. Um, you know, more players drop, retired, signed, traded. Um, I will let you guys know all about them. Of course, the Gladiators moving on from their support duo a couple days ago. Um, it was yesterday, actually, when that was announced. Big Goose retiring. Shaz not retiring, as far as I know. Um, so, you know, changing in the guard for sure in L.A. Um, you know, definitely makes me sad as somebody who watched all three seasons. You know, every single Gladiators game of the three seasons. Um, you know, the, the Finnish duo, they'll be missed. They will be missed by me and I'm sure many, many others. Um, but... Other than that, I hope you guys have an absolutely incredible weekend. I hope everything is going well for you. Um, and while it won't be for predictions, as always, I'll see you in the next one.